Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and happy belated Diwali. We had Diwali just recently. I went to a party and I have to show you my hand guys. Hang on, let me try and focus that so you can see. Isn't this beautiful? There was a professional Hina artist at the party and she did this for me for free. Hold on, focus on my hand. There we go. You can see that. Isn't that incredible? So as I wave my hands around, which I typically do when I'm talking, you will see this beautiful work of art appearing every now and then. We have got a lot to cover today, guys. So I'm going to get straight into my notes. Before I get straight into my notes, I just want to thank you for being an amazing audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you with all my heart for being kind to each other, for expressing your views, uh, you guys are so sophisticated, you're sharing your thoughts, you're sharing your knowledge. I'm learning from you, you know, um, we had this brilliant comment come about how, you know, the CCP is pretty much en route to owning Australia. Yeah, absolutely. Like all this information, it's incredible. Um, I've really been enjoying looking at the comments and I think we're demonstrating as a community that it's very possible to all come together, to have different viewpoints and to learn from each other, to understand each other, and at the same time, be ourselves and hold the viewpoint that we might have, even though it might be different to another person. So I'm really hoping that we can continue this trend. It's so good. I've been to many, many YouTube channels. That's where I'm getting all my news and information from these days. And I love reading the comments because that's where I feel like I'm getting the direct news you know when i read comments by people in the middle east who say well you know it's been nice lately we've had some peace here and, and things like that so these things are very much forming my views uh, i'm also going to you know different all kinds of different websites all kinds of different places reading the comments and in so many places the comments turn into quite a bit of a bun fight and it can get quite nasty and i really don't like that kind of thing and that's not happening here Thank you. That's so good. And, you know, I think we're proving uh, that diversity is good and, you know, we can all have different ideas and we can all listen to each other. We can all hear each other, you know, be there for each other, understand each other uh, and be different. Right. Because that is going to continue, I think, especially with Rahu and Taurus. I think we're going to have even more of that. I think we're going to have even more sort of these highly individualized um, sort of groups, I suppose you could say. You know, I, I was thinking about how many audiences do I serve through this channel, and it's not just two. It's not just people who voted Biden and people who voted Trump. Within that, there are so many different groups there as well, right? You've got the hashtag Walk Away people. You've got, I mean, lots. It gets very diverse so it's quite incredible um so yeah i just really wanted to thank you for being a really amazing high caliber audience you know who, who cares about each other so thank you now i'm recording this on the 17th of november i'm doing this a little bit early this month because i have readings on this week i also have to prepare notes for 2021 which i am going to be doing so come back to the channel if you want your yearly outlook i'm going to be doing that this year i haven't done that before so I'm pretty excited to do that. Right now, we do have planets moving forward again. In last time's report, I said that mid-month, mid-November, we're going to have planets moving forward again. We're going to have momentum again. I had also said that in the early part of the month, around the time of the election, there would be stagnation. And it really was stagnant. Uh, my mum pointed that out to me, actually, because I'd forgotten what I said. And she said, you know, you said something right in your report. I'm like, did I? And she's like, yeah, she said um, that the, it has been stagnant because the results have just kind of jammed. Um, I, I kept going to Google, typing in American election on the day, and I could see both sides' numbers keep going up. And then after a point, Donald Trump flatlined and, and Joe Biden's kept going. And I was like, Okay, but the, the flatlining was, was kind of interesting and I was like, what is going on here? It kind of felt a bit weird. So I want to look into that. I know that there will be so many um, people out there who voted Joe Biden who say, well, yeah, it's because Joe Biden won. I know. I know what you mean. But 
one side is contesting, uh, you know, and I think it needs to be official. And I feel like it's not official. I feel like the media has called it. And uh, I'm kind of interested in the official thing that happens. And I've been looking into that in my research. So I'm going to talk about that today. So today I'm going to do a news matchup. I'm going to answer a viewer question about World War Three. I thought it was such a great question and I wanted to, I'll put that up on the screen and we'll talk about that. Uh, and then in the mini, mini readings, we're going to cover the moon um, because we do have a massive solar eclipse happening. It's very exciting. Uh, and I'll talk about the full moon as well and the planetary movements that are kind of happening around those events. So in the mini readings, you'll get you know the full planetary coverage there. But right now, let's get into the news. So as I mentioned, uh, today on the 17th of November I thought let's see I want to I want some kind of official thing you know I typed into Google did Joe Biden win the election and the search results showed that tabulated uh, election results that I kept seeing as I was looking on the the days uh, where this was happening um, and then it was kind of followed by hundreds of media articles uh, the top three are from Gates funded newspaper The Guardian which I used to read um, followed by the New York Times and the BBC so that was really quite interesting that it was really just a flood of news articles that came up and, and mainstream media news articles in particular um, what else has been happening just in the recent days here in November well on November 13th here in Australia we've got some good news I do believe we had Dr Andrew Lee he tabled the petition for a royal commission to ensure media diversity in Australia this is exciting we basically had two ex-prime ministers recently get together uh, one was Labour Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and the other was Liberal Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. So they're both from opposing sides. They've come together and they've requested a Royal Commission, um, which is basically an independent investigation into a matter of national importance. And they are concerned about media ownership in this country, which I believe is 70% owned by Murdoch, I think. But I mean, basically, it's a monopoly. We are just being spoon fed and brainwashed by one person, one political view. Uh, this is a disaster, right? And I think we're starting to see this around the world, aren't we? You know, it's affected the American election. Uh, I do believe, I do believe the media has <clears throat> definitely affected the election there. It's kind of running the election. It's kind of saying that, well, these people have won. It's like, well, well, hang on a minute. Somebody's contesting, so fair's fair. Let's, you know, it's it's got to be handed over to the courts. We have to wait. So um, it's really fascinating. So I'm glad to see some positive movement in this country. That you know, I read that 500,000 Australians signed the petition. I would have been one of them if I knew about it. I didn't know about it on time. Uh, but when I did the research on that through YouTube, it's actually very difficult to find um, media articles about this as well, right? And so I was very lucky to find info about this. I came across it kind of randomly. Um, but many comments and commentators through YouTube are saying this is one of the most democratic things that they've seen in a long time. And I agree with that. I think it's that's a really good bit of news that's happening here. I know with Murdoch, uh, he's kind of pretty much installed prime ministers in this country in Australia and in the United Kingdom as well. I'm very used to voting for the losing side, right? I've um, typically voted Labour all my life and, you know, in both countries it's been run by conservative governments and um, Murdoch typically gets his way. He puts in who he wants. So I'm used to um, being on the losing side and, um, you know, yeah, Murdoch interfering in, uh, in an election. So I'm kind of used to that, but I think this might be new for America. That's what it seems like, um, you know, that, that Murdoch was quite influential, switched at the last minute. Don't know. That's yeah. All this stuff's pretty mind boggling. Anyway, I've got the next headline on my notes here is election news dates. All right, let's take a look at these dates. What's coming up? Is, is something going to happen? What do I see astrologically? Where are we at? So we're still awaiting official information on the election. I do believe that's a fact. I, I, I wouldn't trust the media to just 
um, say, okay, this person won. I, I would want, me personally, I would want it to be official, official, uh, totally official, right? So that's what I would want. Um, so I believe it's still, you know, could things could change, all right? That is definitely what I'm, and I'm still seeing things in the same way that I've been seeing things all year. I've been looking uh, at the chart of Donald Trump. I've been looking at United States. I've made comments on this in the channel before. I still see things the same way. My view hasn't changed. Now I'm seeing a little bit more. Um, Neptune moves forward on 29th November 2020. I wonder if that, if there's going to be a bit of confusion that clears around 29 November. That's a date to look out for. Definitely 14th December is a very critical date. Let's see what happens there, right? Um, I've got a note here. Could the 14th of December, when we've got that solar eclipse, could that be a date where Biden is eclipsed out of his role because a lot of people think he is uh, the president so could he be eclipsed out and Trump be firmly put in power could that be the case on the 14th of December I had a look at that it's really happening on Trump's um, Trump's own eclipse what he's got going on there I've got a note here this date could activate Mars which is in Jupiter's house Jupiter has the potential to provide some Nietzsche Bunga Raj yoga power to Trump at this time uh, that that is there in the sky for him as well. So this was something that I didn't see in I think last time's report. Last time I really talked a lot about the Karl Sarpa Yoga. So we've got the Karl Sarpa Yoga. It's going to begin first Jan, and now I'm going to mention the last date of that. That's important too now, 27th March 2021, because apparently I've heard the mainstream media saying that this could be this could go as far as April. Right, so uh, I do see that these dates could still be positive for Trump, right? That is what I'm seeing. Um, I've been doing some digging into what's been going on and I came across a lawyer who is very interesting. This man, L. Lynn Wood, and I'm going to put a link below. And if you would like, you can listen to what he has to say now. Some people might think this is all conspiracy theory nonsense and you're very welcome to hold that view. I find it interesting. I'm not saying that what I'm going to read out here is the truth. It's one man's view and you can make up your own mind. Okay, so I'm not suggesting that this is all correct or these are just my ideas that I'm sharing with you. This is just interesting to me. This is, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm just putting it out there. Um, I don't mean to you know change anyone's mind or any of that okay so how about I read this out so now this is a quote directly from L Lynn Wood I'll put up a picture of him on the screen he is an attorney in America I checked him out on Wikipedia I looked at his um, what else do I look at his website I also looked at um, several interviews with him that are on YouTube that are quite old by the mainstream media he is a lawyer who has fought against the mainstream media, actually, uh, and, and done some very interesting things, had some really big and impressive wins. This guy seems to know the truth. And I think when it comes to a lawyer versus a politician, I think I'm more inclined to um, be interested in what a lawyer has to say, especially one of this caliber and, and this kind of lawyer, because he does seem to be a person who is after the truth, right? And I wrote this down, uh, I was contemplating this topic because I was almost going to call this episode Humiliation versus Justice because I had this quote pop into my mind on the weekend. I wrote down this, if you can weather humiliation, you can be a crusader for justice. And there is a connection between humiliation and justice. And I was trying to think about this astrologically and how that works. I am yet to see the, the link through the through the chart, I have more work to do on this concept. But I do see that this person, Linwood, is the kind of person who probably doesn't care about opinions and he really cares about the truth and he cares about finding what that is, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, as I said, I'm more inclined to believe a lawyer who's seeking the truth than to believe any politician. Okay, so I'm just going to read out what this guy has to say. I'll leave a link to where I got this from below so that you can investigate this yourself as well. 15 minutes, I'll go quickly. 
Um, in the words of L. Lynn Wood, who is working specifically on a lawsuit in Georgia regarding the election, he says, I'm confident Donald Trump has won a historic landslide, landslide election. While what you're hearing now in the media, it's a lie. The media has been lying to this country as a propaganda tool by the people who were trying to overthrow our government for years. They groomed us, they played us, but you fool us once, okay, you're not going to fool the people of this country twice. Um, there were lots of other things he went on to say, but then I pulled out this bit because I just thought this was interesting as well. Um, he says the evidence is going to be undisputed that the Dominion voting machines were originally in Venezuela, paid for by Cuban money, and then found their way into America in business relationships tied to George Soros and the Clinton Foundation. And the country's going to find out that there's also been a heavy involvement by China. To me, this all sounds very interesting, and I think it is worthy of investigation, and I think this is really um, a case that needs to be taken over by the court system and handled by the professionals, and they really need to go into evidence. They really need to work out what's what. That is what has to happen, right? I mean, that's what I tend to think. Um, because, yeah, I think it's just important that the media, to me, the real bad guy in all of this situation is neither Trump or Biden, it is the media. Uh, I, I think, you know, the, the, it, it's, it is a propaganda tool by the elite people so that the elite people always get their way, regardless of what the people want that thing has to change, right? Um, and, and that's really what's at stake here. So let's hope that um, there is some change in that regard. All right, so I think I'm gonna get on to the question that was asked, which I thought was a really great question. I'm gonna put it up on the screen. This lovely viewer of mine says, hi Swathi, there are predictions that the end of November 2020 till April 2021 is yet another dangerous time for the world and another wave or World War III could take place. What are your thoughts? Thanks so much for the question. I have been hearing this quite a bit, this talk of civil war and World War III and all this kind of thing. And I tend to think that that type of talk is thrown about a lot casually and easily. And I don't like uh, the term, you know, World War III or civil war or any of that. It conjures up that deep old past that I, I really don't think is going to happen. I really don't think there's going to be uh, a war, a World War III, in that old way that it was, right? I think what we're going through right now, it's a psycho-spiritual war. I do think we're in a bit of a war, but it's a psycho-spiritual war. It, it involves manipulation. It involves, um, you know, a bloke in a sweater who wears glasses who tells us to stay at home because you might catch a cold. Now, I don't want to be controversial, okay? I don't, I don't want to upset anyone because I know that, yes, pandemics and such things are very serious and um you know okay there are people dying etc okay but uh what if you know um those deaths and i have done a lot of research on this and i've looked into it and i've since discovered that you know um a lot of people are dying of other things but on the certificate they are putting covid because um if their covid numbers are high they get kind of financially rewarded. Again, I'm not 100% sure. Please don't, um, you know, quote me on any of these things and, and I could be tuning into all the wrong information. Absolutely, I, I, I could be. I, I have no problem with, um, with the possibility that, you know, everything I think is entirely wrong. I, I'm okay with that. Uh, I've got nothing to defend. You know, for me, I, I find all these stories and all these theories and all these different things interesting. And you see, this is the whole conspiracy theory land, right? And I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about what makes a person um, interested in conspiracy theories and able to go in there and look at them all. And because I do, I've watched thousands of hours of all this stuff. I go down all the rabbit holes and I use my intuition and I decide what sounds true to me and, and what doesn't, etc., etc. I love all that stuff. And I thought about it and I think it does come down to your moon placement. Um, so if you've got, say, for example, a strong moon, if you've got a summer moon, so we're talking sort of end of Aries through to about maybe Libra, if you've got that kind of moon, which I have, I have that kind of summer moon, I'm calling it, then I feel like you'll be quite fearless in terms of taking in information. You'll be able to take in all kinds of stories and you'll be okay. If you've got a winter moon, 
you might not like conspiracy theories at all it might bring you down it might depress you it might not be the kind of content that you want to watch or engage with or whatever me i'm very fearless totally fearless i would say in terms of taking information in i'm extremely fearful <laughs> of giving information out and offending somebody i really don't want to do that okay so you know and i i do feel it you know if, if, if and i've had this happen a little bit this year that, that people have had a little bit of a meltdown on my channel and they've been upset at things i've said and i, I don't want to upset anyone you know but at the same time, I do like to share my view. And, and this lovely young lady here has said, what are your thoughts about war? So what I'm saying is I do see that there is a kind of psycho-spiritual war taking place. That's my view, that I think um, the pandemic has been a bit of a cover for um, the powers that be, Saturn and Capricorn, that kind of energy. It's a power grab. It's like, let's control people a bit more than we ever have before. Let's turn cities on and off. Let's ground all the planes. Let's isolate people. Let's keep people apart from each other. Let's um, no hugging, no kissing. You know, um, it's like you know, it, 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 it's you know the elite people. I mean, I think they kind of want people to um, be cycling through. And I might as well. How am I going for time? Twenty-one minutes. We're going to run out of time here, and I've still got more to cover. Do I? Yes, I do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend time with this. If I need another memory card, I'm just going to do it because this is interesting. And this is um, what I want to say is that, say, for example, these elite people, they want to keep us 200 courage. They want to keep us cycling. Oh, well, 20, I suppose, is shame, isn't it? And what a thousand is enlightenment enlightenment they want to keep us cycling through here right they want to keep um, humanity you know cycling in here so so be afraid you know um, you could catch a deadly illness and etc um, etc et they don't want you feeling courageous and brave and living your life up here which is, in fact, where humanity is going. We're going there, no matter what. Like, we are absolutely going to be 200 and above. Life is going to change on this planet. We are going to have a great Earth. We're going to have a great new Earth. Um, it's very much just ready to come in. And it's an old, stagnant energy that is um, controlling the planet, kind of from the top, I suppose you could say. I've been looking at the profiles of people like is it Klaus Schwab, the guy who runs the World Economic Forum? We've got George Soros. We've got uh, Rupert Murdoch. You look at these guys. They're all in their 90s. Now, what does that sound like? That sounds like Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, right? That's Pluto. That's the, the age of these people is so... Never before have we had such old people really in charge of the show, right? And that's, to me, very reflective of this Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter energy that we've got going on right now. And I do think that they, can't, they want to keep humanity um, repressed or suppressed. Uh, you know, um, we're becoming harder to control, right? Control, I don't think, is an energy that comes when you leave this plane. It's not really needed up here, I don't think. I should look that up. Where is control? How are we doing? 23 minutes. But yeah, so I, I, in answer to this question about war, I don't think we're going to have war in the old way. We have evolved. And who do I want to quote here? I want to quote Steven Pinker. Now, what I'm going to do, the mem you know, the memory card is just about to cut. So what I think I'll do, actually, do you know what? I'm actually going to just cut it myself so we can start with a fresh memory card. Why don't I just do that? Right, we're back. And fresh memory card, all of that. So now I think I was answering the question, what are my thoughts about World War III? Um, do I think that's gonna take place? No, and the reason is, one of the reasons is, so I covered the bit about how I think that we're in a psycho-spiritual war, right? So that's a very evolved form of warfare. It doesn't involve bombs or bullets or any of that. I don't think we're gonna have any of that. I wanted to quote Steven Pinker. Now let me see if I can find his article, because I think this guy, He's brilliant and um, this guy voted Biden I think he did I, I think he was pro Biden even though he was recently censored on Twitter and we saw earlier in the year JP Sears got censored and he I think 
did a hashtag walk away. I think he left the Democrats and joined the Trump side. So it's really interesting to see um, what you know how how that works for people. How some people will um, stay with their party through loyalty o over the decades, um, and some people, you know, they'll experience have a bad experience and they'll react and they'll go to the other party. And like this, it's it's fascinating. So anyway, let's take a look at this. I'll put the article up on the screen. I'll also link to it below so that you'll be able to read it as well. But it's um, the Harvard Gazette, and the Gazette has asked Stephen the question, in the better angels of our nature, you explored how the trend toward peace has steadily increased. Why expand the premise of that book for enlightenment now? Anyway, he goes on to say, to my pleasant surprise, war is not the only scourge that has declined over the course of history. Extreme poverty has decimated. It's gone from 90% of the world's population to 10%. Literacy has increased from about 15% to more than 85%. Prosperity has increased. Longevity has increased from about 30 to about 71 years worldwide and 80 in the developed world. So that's incredible, isn't it? You know, and I mean, he goes on to talk more about um, how he sees things and I think it's true when you look at the statistics of our world and when you stop reading and watching the mainstream media, right? The mainstream media will have you thinking that there's killing going on left, right and centre, that we're still a bunch of barbarians. No, we're not. We have evolved. And thank God for platforms like YouTube, which, yes, sadly, they're being censored, but I mean, um, other platforms are now springing like springing up like mushrooms everywhere. So, I mean, I don't think YouTube can afford to be too heavy handed uh, on the whole censorship thing. Well, let's see, you know, people will move if they have to. But um, do take a look at that article by Steven Pinker because it will show that statistically we have grown. Even I think about it, I think about the kind of things that we can buy at the dollar store now that you could not dream of buying 20 or 30 years ago, right? And I feel so rich, like I go to a dollar store, I got a few dollars and I can buy really cool stuff. Like, I do think that we've uh, become more prosperous. I do think that we've become more intelligent. Though a lot of people are angry at the world saying that we've all, you know, everyone's being dumbed down. And again, I think that's another myth. I think when we really look at things, things are actually quite good uh, on the planet. But I mean, again, you know, um, all this stuff takes a lot of time, a lot of research. And yeah, uh, believe me, I'm constantly researching and learning every single day. Now, back to this thing of predictions. There are predictions at the end of November 2020 till April 2020 is yet another dangerous time for the world. Yes, it is. I, I do think it's um, not dangerous, but I, I do think that it's going to be a tricky time. I think the astrologers have ident identified this perfectly. They've said that, uh, you know, we're looking at Jupiter being debilitated and what are the problems of this? I've been looking and thinking about it today and one of the things I thought was that physically um, there could be earthquakes. Uh, I did some research and I found, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010, these were years that had some big earthquakes. I don't know, I mean, we could have some earthquakes. It's a bit of a guess on my part. Let's see what happens. I did make a prediction, uh, I think it was earlier for earlier this year that hasn't come true. I said that there would be floods in Southeast Australia around sort of, I think I was saying September, October around that time. We have had a lot of rain here in Sydney anyway, but we haven't seen the kind of floods that I was thinking we might see. So <clears throat> that was something uh, that I predicted that didn't happen, so there you have it. Um, let's see. So now, what could we see with this Jupiter being debilitated? All right, well, I'll have a go. So one of the things I've said could be um, earthquakes at this time, though I do not wish for that. If it doesn't happen, I'd be very happy. Like with the floods, I'm happy it hasn't, you know, we don't want bad flooding. Um, Jupiter, what is the deal with Jupiter? When <clears throat> Jupiter is debilitated, what do we see there? So it's a major light in the sky of all our luminaries, of all our planets that is um, off. And, you know, it's kind of like 
switching off our wisdom function, isn't it? Right. So this is not a good thing. Um, this is where Biden supporters can be like, oh, no, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I can see it. You, you, from your side of things, you'll be like, oh, this is this is bad. Trump could get back in. Yes, it's possible. Um, so, you know, but for Trump people, Trump people will be seeing, OK, Jupiter's debilitated. Um, could this be? Because I think on the Trump side, people are really looking to bring down the media um, and, and some of the corruption and some of the, you know, really, um, you know, the, the, the fact that the elite are kind of running the world uh, and are above the law and are not, um, you know, are not allowing people's voices to be heard. I mean, one of you mentioned in the comment, this was last month, you said that there so many dissenting voices have been taken off YouTube. Absolutely. Yeah, I've seen it. It's awful. You know, Amazing Polly, she got deplatformed. Um, she even had a problem with PayPal. It's really sad, right? So um, I'm seeing all these things. I've got the notes here that look, there could be the potential. So with the wisdom light switched off like this, we could have the potential for things going wrong. Yes, it's a bit higher. Potential for bad choices is higher. That's true. Because if your wisdom's not there, you might be making bad choices. Um, it's possible. Uh, potential for negative conditioning is higher. One thing I mean that could be is Jupiter offering protection for the elite. Um, Jupiter can also be seen as like, I tend to think that, you know, which one is the planet of laziness? Is it Saturn or is it Jupiter? I tend to think it's Jupiter. So if we're lazy about protecting elite people, maybe if that's switched off, we might be able to clean up some stuff. Is that possible? Um, there's lots of ways of seeing this, okay? Depending on what you want, who you are. We've got Rahu in Taurus. Could that be skewing our vision? I do think so. I definitely think so because we've got the eyes here at Taurus, in Taurus. Eyes are in Taurus. Um, and, and also, I mean, if you think about it, sort of, um, Rahu is also like the face. Uh, Taurus is also the face. We've got Rahu um, in Taurus, and that's a foreign object on the face. Isn't that interesting, right? So Rahu in Taurus is skewing our vision. It's also putting masks on people's faces and things like that putting a foreign object on people's faces. So, I mean, but when I, the note I have here for Rahu in Taurus, I've got that we're all seeing everything so differently and so individually. Um, yeah, it's kind of like everyone's a different sort of family member and seeing everything so vastly different differently. It's like when you have siblings and they go opposite ways or they have um, opposite goals or ideas, that kind of thing. I've seen that happen with so many of my friends, like when they've got like two daughters in close in age and they both like the study, the totally opposite things and like the different things. And, you know, um, so could this be a Rahu in, in Taurus function? We've got Ketu in Scorpio, which I've said on the channel before means something about the fact that who you depend on will change or come into question. Right. So that's another thing that we're dealing with. And that's a media thing as well. So I've depended on certain sources for information all my life. I used to always trust The Guardian. I don't read The Guardian anymore, you know, and that's only happened in the last couple of years, I think, that I've kind of gone off it. Um, I've got a note here, this time may feel dark, it may feel lonely, it may feel isolating. And there are lots of remedies, though, because this is a very spiritual time. So it's great for spiritual work. So the, the remedy is to keep coming back to the self, keep coming back to yourself. Keep bringing yourself back to yourself. It's like when you meditate. And this is when you're doing a pure transcendental meditation style thing. I've been initiated um, by a teacher in, well, in America, actually, um, in California at uh, Asilomar in Monterey. I loved it. I had a great time. I was there with my teacher, Deborah King. She initiated me. She gave me a seed sound. And, um, you know, these days, though, I use the seed sound. I just use the seed sound, ah, or om. These are the seed sounds I use. And when you're doing transcendental meditation, you allow the um, thoughts to be there, but the practice of meditation, because that's just natural. Your, your mind's always going to have some thoughts and mind activity, but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to bring your mind back. You're, you're meant to come back to your body, come back to your breathing, come back to you know feeling your heartbeat, come back to being here now. Um, the practice is to keep coming back, okay? 
So I've got the note here, don't need the world to be a certain way for you to be happy. You're going to get to practice that over these next few months, right? I've got the note, do not depend on a YouTuber for news, right? Yes, that cancels me out. Don't depend on me. No, not a good idea, not a good strategy. Um, I could be wrong. I very frequently am. Um, don't depend on the media. Uh, don't depend on politics. Don't depend on outside opinions. Don't, don't you know, um, if you're depending, and that's what you've got to keep bringing yourself back to you. You know, okay, what am I doing today? Can I be creative? Can I, you know, can I give something out even, right? Um, I've got the note, if you are feeling strongly, remember that those are your feelings, not those of politicians or others. Others aren't making you feel any particular way. Your feelings are your feelings. And that's a really tough thing for us to get our heads around. I know I struggle with it, um, but I'm working with this concept. And yeah, it's, it's, it's work all right. Uh, you know, I've got the note, this is time to really find, really see, really feel and experience your own inner light. When there are stars diminished out there, okay, it's darker, but your light should hopefully be brighter, you know, and your light should be um, the one that you can get to know, right? It, that's the point of keep coming back to the self. You're meant to get to know you, okay, and what that is, what that light is, and, and what that's here to do. So it's incredible. It could be an incredible time. It's definitely what I'm saying. I've got a note here, not a time to initiate long-term plans if you can hold off on those. If you're really wanting to start a business or do something like that, maybe just do some strategizing, get a, get a bullet journal, scribble your notes. You know, I've been scribbling my notes here. Um, do that as an activity, right? So I do think that these months are going to be a bit tough, but equally, uh, I don't think they're going to be so horrible or so catastrophic. I do think we have evolved um, beyond the barbaric people maybe that we were, say, you know, I don't know, like a hundred years ago or however long ago. I, I, I think we have evolved. And, and do read that Steven Pinker article. It's very good. Uh, or get into his content, his stuff. He's, he's putting out remarkable stuff. So guys, um, I think we're going to get into the mini readings. Uh, okay, right, we're at the 13 minute mark. I'm going to fly through these mini readings because we've got quite a bit to cover and I've covered a lot in the intro. So um, I don't have a huge amount to say here. And I've written everything down in great detail, so I don't have to think too much. All right, so Aries Moon, welcome Aries Moon. Thank you so much for joining. Now, while Saturn and Jupiter are in your 10th house, they continue to transform your work front, okay? Mars is getting ready to enter your first house. So this is good for the new year. That's really gonna happen in the new year. Um, hopefully you're gonna have some new Mars energy uh, after Christmas. But if you wanna find out more about that, I will be doing a 2021 video so you'll be able to watch more um, about that there. So 14th December. This is an important date for everybody. We're going to have a total solar eclipse and this is happening for you in your eighth house. Expect changes in family relationships, other people's money. Uh, perhaps you'll feel confident to cut off from other people's opinions. This could be a really good time. Um, and maybe you'll find more of your inner light, may find more of who you truly are. So, you know, in an eclipse, we often have this phenomenon where things get eclipsed out of our lives. So watch out for that. On the 30th of December, we've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your third house. So now Ardha Nakshatra is definitely that stormy sort of um, part of the the nakshatra system. So we could have emotional storms or the filling up of your intellect. Your mind might just become full of thoughts and thinking and, you know, and maybe you've already got that. And maybe you're like, how do I, you know, clear this? It will clear, okay? But it's going to fill up until about the 30th of December. Um, also, you, your courage may be tested. So take stock of what's in your mind, what's filling up your mind. Your mind might get quite full. Um, and you'll be able to clear it, right? Those storms are going to release after 30th December, uh, but they could be filling up, your mind could be filling up up until that time. I've got the note, take stock of what's in your mind and clear it by writing it all out 
and burning it if you can or simply ripping it up and throwing it out. Maybe that's a good way of starting to get some stuff out of your system. So Aries Moon, I wish you a good December. And we are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, so while Saturn and Jupiter are in your ninth house, <clears throat> they continue to transform your intellect and your beliefs. Mars is getting ready to enter your 12th house. So this is quite interesting. Mars in this position, <clears throat> position may help you explore your spirituality even deeper. I like Mars in the 12th. It's a restless position for it, you know, but uh, some interesting things can happen. You can learn a lot spiritually. You can find new teachers. I've often found that myself. Um, you know, it can be a good placement, uh, depending on what else is going on in your chart. Okay, 14th December, a very important date. We've got total solar eclipse happening in your seventh house. So expect changes in business, potentially, um, or in how you're public view you or even how your partner views you. It could be some dynamic change or something that shifts or happens at that time. Perhaps you will finally let go of some old dynamic that's been holding you back in those areas. Okay. Uh, 30th December we've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your second house. So there could be some emotional storms relating to your family. It's a possibility here okay um, your intellect may also be illuminated you may have a deeper understanding of your spiritual purpose in your family or some new thing might come into your mind or, or a new understanding um, but the other thing is that you know these emotional storms kind of filling up your mind in relation to family your place in the family all of that you know um, I think you'll be gaining new insights, new understanding. It's kind of going to fill your mind up to the 30th of December and then it will all release, right? Any emotional storm energy will release and clear. You're going to feel so good uh, after that mm, full moon. But it, it, yeah, things might be a little bit hectic in the lead up to it. Okay, so Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So while Saturn and Jupiter are in the eighth house for you, they continue to transform your family structure and or your finances. Mars is getting ready to enter your 11th house. So, oh my God, that's superb. You are going to start the year beautifully with Mars. Hallelujah. Well done. Good on you, Gemini Moon. It's a great placement, but I'll talk more about that in the 2021 outlook. 14th December, we've got a total solar eclipse happening in your sixth house. Expect changes in your health. Nothing negative, it just might be a shifting of energy or um, a fluctuation or something, you know, it, it doesn't have to be anything major or anything like that. Um, sometimes people can get pressure headaches or things like that when there's, um, I know a person who would get pressure headaches when there are too many clouds in the sky. Okay, so um, he was extremely sensitive and psychic, so that can happen. Um, perhaps your competition or yeah so sixth house we're dealing with here I mean so as I said health maybe but it could be to do with your competition your competition at work um, or something to do with your career or your service in the world there might be a shift in those areas on the 30th of December we've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your first house this is pretty big so you might be dealing with some emotional storms relating to your entire sense of self okay so nothing small there gemini moon is quite big um, i've got the note feel the feelings see if you can really take the time in the lead up to that full moon and if you are having these emotional storms or this emotional stuff that's kind of filling your mind or, or coming in um, to your being see if you can really distinguish what's yours and what's someone else's so, and you'll be letting go of all of it, but with feelings, what we have to discover is that um, they're our feelings, okay? And we shouldn't mm, try to blame the outside world for our feelings. We've got to feel our feelings and honor them and go, wow, okay, feeling, thank you for being there. You know, thank you, hatred, for rearing your, you know, fascinating head today. Um, thank it, you know, be with it. Just recognize, okay, wow, and recognize that I'm not hating that particular person. I'm just having the feeling of hatred 
right? Or whatever it is, or whatever bad feeling it is, anger or whatever, it's like, okay, that's my feeling. Um, that will help you to be with it and not necessarily express it or pin it on the outside world or, you know, um, dump it somewhere else. So, um, yeah, feel the feelings and if see if you can see that they are yours. Yeah, I've got the note here. And see if you can really master the fact that you know that, okay, these feelings aren't because of the outside world. This is just, this is just how I'm feeling. So Gemini Moon, I wish you well this month. It should be an okay month, but I mean, stay safe out there, um, you know, and take your time. Don't, don't rush with anything. All right, thanks so much for stopping by, and we're now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. All right, so while Saturn and Jupiter are in your seventh house, they continue to transform your marriage and or your business, right? Any partnerships that you're involved in, Saturn and Jupiter are really doing some work there. They are transforming uh, how partnerships work in your world, right? Mars is getting ready to enter your 10th house. So you're going to start the new year with a real focus on work and energy in that area, energy to hit the ground running and get on with your work. So that's quite good. 14th December, we've got a total solar eclipse happening in your fifth house. So expect changes in your creativity. Perhaps you'll get an upgrade of skills, talents, or gifts. You know, maybe this shift is going to bring some kind of um, newness to your creativity. This could be quite exciting. If anything has been holding you back in expressing your true self, hopefully this dynamic that's holding you back gets eclipsed out for good. On the 30th of December, you've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your 12th house. So there could be some emotional storms, and these could be relating to your spiritual self, your sense of spirituality, or it could be relating to the parts of yourself that you like to escape to, right? So maybe you like to escape to times in your childhood that were really wonderful, or um, maybe you like to escape into a good book or a good YouTube channel or, or something that you like. Wherever it is that you like to escape to, that might feel a bit different. Um, you know, and, and we've got this, this emotional storm energy that's coming and filling up our emotional bodies and our minds. It's going to be interesting around the 30th of December. I think um, the thing to do is to feel the feelings and to let them go, to recognize that they are your feelings and also to recognize how and where you are holding feelings for others. And, you know, you can kind of marvel at, wow, you know what? I actually do hold a lot of stuff for other people um, you know maybe you're the friend that everyone goes to to talk to which cancer moon you may well be um, people people tell you their stuff and I've got the note here marvel at how much emotion you can hold for others it's quite incredible um, but make sure you feel your own feelings and let them go or let them be be with your feelings you know no resistance this is like a time of no resistance um, and just try to feel and be with everything. So Cancer Moon, I do hope um, that that's a good outlook for the month of December for you. Um, you can always check your Ascendant as well. And we are now going to move on to Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, the memory card's going to run out, so we're going to put another one in. Hi, Leo Moon. Thank you so much for joining. Let's get into your reading. So while Saturn and Jupiter, they're in your sixth house, continue to transform how you serve the world and or how your competition perceives you, Mars is getting ready to enter your ninth house. So you're going to start the new year ready to learn and grow and possibly, you know, restructure your beliefs. There'll be things that occur to you. There'll be changes that you want to make. So that could be quite exciting. 14th December, total solar eclipse is happening in your fourth house. Okay, expect some changes at home, either to do with your property, where you live, how you live, um, might be in connection with your mother. Um, or how you feel about being at home or how you feel about your mother or something along those lines. We've got 30th December, full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your 11th house. So there could be emotional storms relating to your professional network of colleagues and or your friends or to do with an older sibling as well. Feel the feelings, let them go. Okay, and that's a really important thing to recognize that when we have feelings, 
sometimes we think, oh, well, you made me feel that way. Well, if you look very closely, um, you'll see that they are actually just your feelings, right? It's not that somebody put them in there, it's just these are your feelings, okay? And that, um, you know, maybe you're choosing to attribute it to the outside world or to the outside situation or to the outside person, but it's actually your feeling that's within you. It's a really hard thing to get your head around. I'm only <clears throat> just starting to get my head around it after having studied this content since, I don't know, the mid-2000s. So <laughs> I've really been studying it for a long time, but I'm starting to get better at it now. So um, don't be hard on yourself if, you're, you know, if you have some emotional storms and you find it difficult to, to be with them. Um, feel the feelings, let them go. I've got the note here, a chance to observe how you hold the emotions of yourself and of others as well. We do hold stuff for other people. Other people do park their emotions uh, in our space as well. So I'm gonna be talking about this a little bit more when I cover the air element. So if you're interested in that, stick around on the channel. But Leo Moon, it, it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna be doing a 2021 outlook, so please do come by on the channel to see that. All right, thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so while Saturn and Jupiter are in your fifth house, they continue to transform your creative gifts and talents. And, you know, how you are creative, I mean, that's fantastic that you're getting a thorough check-in by Saturn. He's gonna be rifling through all of that in his fine detail as he does. And hopefully it's gonna be helping you eliminate what you don't need there. Um, but also help you refine. I mean, if you put the work in here with Saturn and Jupiter, uh, this could be amazing, Virgo Moon. I'm excited for that. Mars is getting ready to enter your eighth house. So you're going to start the new year ready possibly to organize your finances, for example, with that Mars energy starting there. But I'll be talking about this more in the 2021 outlook. I am going to do a 2021 outlook this year, so stick around for that. Now on the 14th of December, we've got a total solar eclipse happening in your third house. So expect changes with siblings, friendships, uh, you know, perhaps your sense of courage as well. Perhaps something holding you back in these areas, you know, in the realm of how you socialize. You know, maybe something's been holding you back in that area and that might go for good. So that's a great thing. 30th December, we've got full moon in Ardha Nakshatra. So that's in your 10th house. Emotional storms relating to your profession, perhaps how you feel about your purpose in the world. You might really start to um, get a sense of, you know, what am I doing in this world and how do I feel about it? And am I enjoying this? And can I keep doing this job for the next 10 years? And you know what, this is killing my soul. Like I've got to do something different, right? You know, you might be getting that some of those feelings come up um, because what we're going to have up to 30 December, we're going to have these emotional songs. We are going to have some emotional energy building up in our psyches, in our emotional bodies, in our mental bodies uh, up to the 30th of December. That will all release and we will feel a lot better, but um, it's going to be an interesting time. So feel the feelings, let them go and recognize that they are your feelings and you know they are happening within you and you can be with them, be with them. If you're feeling hatred, be with it. Go, okay, wow, I'm feeling that, okay. Um, don't put your focus on the thing that's making you feel that. That's an illusion, it's happening within you, right? So be there where it's happening. So this time is gonna show you what changes you need to make to feel good about who you are and to feel good about your purpose in the world and what it is that you do, okay? So that's really important. All right, Virgo Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So now while Saturn and Jupiter are in the fourth house, they continue to transform your home life. Mars is getting ready to enter your seventh house. So expect a strong start to next year in the area of your marriage, your partnerships, uh, your business, perhaps your public persona out there in the world, Mars, energy, rah, you know, it wants to get on and do things. So that could be quite exciting. I'm gonna be doing a 2021 outlook, so I'll talk more about that there. 
14th December we've got a to total solar eclipse happening in your second house. So expect changes in your family uh, or in your long-term savings or you know wealth. Um, those areas could be things could be shifting or something could be happening around there. Hopefully any mental habits that have been holding you back in connection with your family or in connection with you building that wealth, you building that long-term abundance, right? You might have some things holding you back there. Hopefully those mental patterns and dynamics will be eclipsed out. That's what we're hoping for, right? I hope so, right? Sometimes an eclipse can be an amazing thing to kind of clean out our psyches and get rid of things that are not productive or not helping us. On the 30th of December, we've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your ninth house. So you might have emotional storms relating to your beliefs. Yeah, this could be a bit full on. This could be fascinating though. Um, emotional storms relating to your beliefs, your worldview, um, and what you hold as true is going to culminate at this time. This could be a really big time. Okay, um, Take strength in the fact that you can hold a lot of information uh, and find the time to let those emotions go. Be with them, observe them, recognize that, wow, I'm having these feelings. Um, you might think that the outside world is making you have those feelings, but no, it's, that's actually not uh, correct. These are your feelings and um, when you be with them and acknowledge them, they calm right down. Okay, If you keep thinking, oh, that person's making me feel bad, it will stay. You know what I mean? Whereas when you be with it and recognize, okay, this is my thing, it could be anybody. You know, that person is interchangeable, but this feeling I'm having is mine. That's when, you know, you make the connections and you do the work. Um, it's, it's observation. You really just have to observe it. It'll calm right down. So, you know, perhaps uh, up to the 30th of December, you might be getting some opportunities <laughs> to deal with some of that. So um, Libra Moon, I'm wishing you well. Uh, please do also um, come and watch the 2021 Outlook. You can also watch your Ascendant as well. All right, so we are going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Welcome. Now, while Jupiter and Saturn, they're both in your third house, they are continuing to transform your inner strength and your courage. So that's pretty amazing work that Saturn and Jupiter are doing. They're kind of testing the weak links and, you know, working together to expand you to hopefully, you know, things that you don't need go, but things that you need will stay, all that kind of thing. There's a lot of work being done in your third house there. Um, a third house is also media, how you present yourself to the world, how you communicate, your networks, um, friendships, uh, what else? I mean, it's um, siblings, it, there's a lot there. So Saturn and Jupiter are doing some good work there. Mars is getting ready to enter your sixth house. Oh, this is fantastic. This is beautiful. I love this transit. You've got a good transit. Expect a strong start to next year in relation to your work. Yeah, this is a good one. So lucky you, Scorpio Moon, I'm very happy uh, for you. 14 December, so we've got total solar eclipse happening in your first house. Wow, okay, major. Um, expect changes in your sense of self, in who you are. Okay, if you have any patterns or dynamics holding you back in your relationship, in your artistry, in how you express yourself in the world, all those really big things, you know, in who you are fundamentally as a human being. If you've got anything holding you back, hopefully that gets eclipsed out at this time, okay? If there's something you're done with, start thinking about it now, start thinking about, you know what, yeah, I could do with not. Um, I revealed one on the channel today, which was, um, yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm always able to take information in, but I'm sometimes scared to give it out because I don't want to offend somebody. Things like that, you know. Um, there are things that we don't need that are holding us back, right? Uh, and there's always a way. There's always a way of giving information without offending people. We've got to believe that, right? So you might come up with things in your first house that you discovered, you know what, I know this thing's holding me back. And um, start identifying it now. It could get eclipsed out. 30th December, we've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your eighth house. Emotional storms relating to your family and or your finances, perhaps something will culminate or come to a close. Feel the feelings, let them go. Um, don't attribute those feelings to the outside world, okay? So when you have feelings come up within you, know that they're your feelings and that um, feel them, observe them, acknowledge them, don't attribute them to the outside world, don't be looking outside constantly thinking, oh, they're bad, they're bad. No, bring yourself back in, recognize these are my feelings. 
and it will all dissolve okay and recognize that the outside world it's this is why we don't take it personally like if I think oh my husband is being horrible to me it's like when I recognize that the horrible feelings are my feelings and that that man could be anybody right he's interchangeable you don't take it personally then you see I got a whole thing on this I might do a video on it so who knows um, I have to move on to the next one because we're running out of time but Scorpio Moon it, it's gonna be all right stay safe out there um, you know and hopefully we've got a stronger start to next year uh, come back and watch your 2021 outlook I haven't done the notes yet but I will and um, that should be ready quite soon so thank you so much Scorpio Moon and we're now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon welcome thank you so much for joining so now while Saturn and Jupiter are in your second house they continue to transform your sense of family or what family means to you um, and or your long-term wealth or your abundance your sense of abundance and what that means to you all of this is being transformed and worked through you're in your last phase of Sati Sati great this is usually quite a good phase um, a lot of amazing things can happen during this phase so um, you know hang in there you don't have long to go you're, well I mean another couple of years you're going to be rewarded big time so stick around for that um, Mars is getting ready to enter your fifth house so expect to feel creatively fired up in the new year that's really exciting and I'm going to be talking about the new year I'm going to be doing a 2021 outlook so please do come back to the channel for that on the 14th of December we've got a total solar eclipse happening in your 12th house you can expect changes in your spiritual self or those places within you that you go to escape right so perhaps you escape in memories of another time um, perhaps you escape in you know good books or good TV or something like that you might have some changes here maybe you discover wow that thing I used to do it doesn't do it for me anymore you know I always used to escape through that means but maybe after this eclipse that gets eclipsed out and that doesn't work for you so much anymore but you have something new right something like that I mean that's just one idea that's one way of reading this um, but it, it could be quite interesting so expect some changes around the 14th of December look for something that gets eclipsed out and look for that in relation to 12th house matters see what happens on the 30th of December we've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra which is in your seventh house so there could be some emotional storms relating to your spouse or your business or your public how your public views you um, there could be a fullness and accumulation definitely of emotional energy in your emotional body in your mental body all of that you could just have like all this oh god accumulation of like stuff and energy and anxiety it could be well I mean God this is seventh house this is huge for you it could be coming from the collective right so um, yeah I've got the note here you've been holding others feelings for them so give yourself credit for being able to hold so much and I mean this could be a time at that full moon where you look at yourself and you go oh my god I am actually quite good at holding a lot of stuff for a lot of people and you might recognize I don't want to do that anymore <laughs> you know you might recognize it okay I've done that I, I can do that I want to do something else now you know um, yeah so it's a, it's a really interesting time so Sagittarius moon do take a look at your ascendant sign as well and also look out for my 2021 outlook that's coming up soon so thank you so much for watching and we are now going to welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining just taking the time uh, you're in the middle of Sade Sade how are you doing my goodness I hope you're doing okay uh, what have we got we've got Saturn and Jupiter continuing to transform your entire sense of self yeah major I mean okay you're going through a big time I know um, Mars is getting ready to enter your fourth house so there's a new year new energy is going to be there to transform your home this could be quite exciting um, 14th December we've got total solar eclipse happening in your 11th house so I've got the note here wish for new things for your home uh, and the reason I have that is I think because we've got Mars as Lord of your so I've got this right I want to bring up that diagram but I haven't got it but, but uh, yeah there's a reason Mars, Mars is Lord of your fourth as well I think so um, you could wish for new things for your home you could wish for a new home you could wish for a lot of new things it could be a good time because it's also a new moon time so you can plan to see it this time it's very exciting uh, but you might just notice that there might be some changes at home if there's anything blocking your ability to relax and feel comfort okay 
and that could be what could that thing be that's blocking your ability to relax it might be a mental pattern it might be a thing I, I've observed this within myself that sometimes I think oh I haven't done it properly or I haven't um, I haven't completed it or I could have done it better or I have these strange just small things in my mind that kind of make me feel like I've got more to do than I actually do so it's like so look out for the things within you and they could be strange they could be irrational they could be tiny little things who knows but there could be something that's blocking your ability to relax and on the 14th of December maybe this could get eclipsed out maybe this could go right amazing um, the potential is there for that so that's very exciting 30th December we've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your sixth house so there could be emotional storms relating to your career uh, and or your work competition this could even relate to your health you've been holding so much emotion for others and on behalf of others and it's time to let it all go so this might accumulate up until the 30th of December but then it will all like a storm like it'll all just rain itself out and it'll go so don't worry but this is just giving you a heads up um, as to what's happening here all right Capricorn Moon do look out for my 2021 outlook I am going to be doing that and as well as that um, do check out your ascendant as well all right thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon Aquarius Moon welcome thank you so much for joining I notice here you're in your first phase of Sadi Sadi how are you doing I hope you're okay um, you know hang in there okay being polished into a diamond uh, good timing as I might have said to you before great timing to have Sadi Sadi now while Saturn and Jupiter are in your 12th house great timing I mean by that for anyone who's new um, who hasn't watched my old videos I mean that because like over the next few years the world's a bit out of kilter okay so uh, it's a good time to be having sati sati you've timed it well um, so now while Saturn and because by the time you're out of it the world will be better too okay right while Saturn and Jupiter are in your 12th house they continue to transform your spiritual self Mars is getting ready to enter your third house so it's going to be oh beautiful hello Aquarius I mean you got great transit here you're gonna have a new year you're gonna have a new sense of courage you're gonna have a fantastic start to the year I'm really really happy for you this is great you're one of the lucky three who's getting a good Mars transit at the start of the year okay um, 14th December what do we have going on so we've got the total solar eclipse happening in your 10th house so expect changes at work or perhaps how you feel about work or what you want to do in the world or something along those lines if there are any patterns or dynamics within you that are holding you back regarding work success hopefully those are going to be eclipsed out okay 30th of December we've got full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your fifth house so we've got emotional storms relating to the area of romance um, artistic talents and or children so this is a really interesting time there's an accumulation energy here and you know yeah all these things might be accumulating within you um, and within that area of creativity for you this is really interesting so I've got the note here you can express this accumulated energy out by creating something artistic make something with it make something beautiful you know express these storms to clear them out and that's what Michael Jackson did you know, he used to be really angry at the media I think that song want to be starting something I think was all about his anger at the media it's like well you always want to be starting something you know he made a beautiful song out of that frustration right so you've got that potential um, coming up to the 30th of December and then those storms they'll, they'll clear out okay and it should be a lot better energy in the new year and you can find that out <clears throat> if you take a look at my um, 2021 outlook I will be doing that soon so Aquarius Moon thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Pisces Moon I'm just going to take a sip of my water okay Pisces Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now while Saturn and Jupiter are in your 11th house they continue to transform your professional network circles and your ability to take in opportunities that's big right um, this is a good transit for Saturn in fact so a lot if you feel like not much is happening for me in my life and not, not much is going on and what is going on please know that Saturn is doing a huge amount of work for you behind the scenes all right he is kind of transforming 
your ability to take in big opportunities that's massive um, Mars is getting ready to enter your second house okay so that is gonna happen in the start of the new year I'm gonna do a 2021 outlook for that so come by and, and have a look but just quickly you know um, at the start of the new year you might want to take it easy around family be careful what you say to your family members or that kind of thing um, that's at the start of the new year so I'll talk more about that in the 2021 outlook but on the 14th of December you've got a total solar eclipse happening in your ninth house so this is a fantastic time to clear out old beliefs okay what limiting beliefs do you have what old outmoded ways of thinking do you have that need to go you know um, it's time to restructure your mental body uh, write out what no longer serves you and tear it up you know I've been discovering these things in myself I found little tiny ego traps that I do like I, I think to myself oh I haven't completed this or I haven't done it properly or I haven't you know um, the other day I wanted to write out my feelings in order to I thought it would be a good way to clear out and be good for my health and anyway I wrote two or three lines and, that, and I caught my mind thinking you haven't done enough you haven't written everything out and then I thought to myself no I have and I realized and I recognized that I was self-sabotaging myself I was going I was judging myself as saying you haven't written out all your feelings therefore you will not heal and I thought I looked at all the few things I wrote and I thought no but that is everything I can't write more than that <laughs> you know and so I realized wow I've always got this thing thinking I haven't done enough you know and I'm like what is that why do I have that I don't need that right so on the 14th of December you got a potential for some of those unnecessary things to be eclipsed out and to go right so maybe if you identify what some of them are bring them up to the surface write them out what you want to have eclipsed out that might that might go for good so that's really exciting um, 30th of December I've got a full moon in Ardha Nakshatra in your fourth house so there could be some emotional storms relating to home life um, this could be a bit of a tough time okay and lead up to the 30th of December emotionally it might be a tough time have love and compassion for yourself um, watch and see how you carry the emotions of others observe that at this time lovingly release all the emotion at the end of this month it's going to get emotional it's going to get a bit hectic um, so feel your own feelings recognize that they're your feelings if someone's making you feel upset recognize that that person could be anybody that they are interchangeable that that's the outside world don't just focus on okay that person's making me feel bad recognize no i'm feeling bad that's my feeling that's happening within me and that person could be interchangeable that could be anybody so if your friends making you feel bad recognize that that friend you could interchange them with somebody else it doesn't matter it's not they're not doing it you're the one who has the feeling be with the feeling observe it recognize okay wow I've got this feeling uh, I'm feeling hatred hi Pisces moon sorry about that the camera got cut as it does and I think I was talking to you about hatred and I was saying that if you're feeling this hatred and you're thinking it's at that other person that's actually an illusion it's not it's not the other person that's making you feel that way you have that feeling within you right um, that's your feeling and when you be with it like it like it's a little child and you're giving it attention it starts to dissolve okay if you keep looking at that other person hating them your attention is bleeding out to that other person you see your energy is just bleeding kind of going out um, if you recognize that this person is a gift and has shown me that I've got hatred within me you can then be with yourself and be with the hatred as if it's a small child and be with it and go okay it's all right I'm here for you I see you I'll be with you and it just it does start to dissolve it's quite incredible so I think that's where we got to um, I've got the note here feel your own feelings let them go don't attribute them to the outside world own your feelings observe them and they will clear I think we've covered that just about so Pisces moon thank you so much for joining uh, thank you everybody who watches these videos I'm so happy that you're all Part of this community we've got a nice thing here everybody's so lovely and so kind 
and I hope I haven't triggered anyone in the comments um, like uh, in my comments and, and sometimes people get upset in, in the comments I hope that doesn't happen this time but um, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time Shut up! Come on!